I mean, I, <laughs> what would you call this race? This was the greatest Bristol race I have ever seen, period. Yo, what's up, everyone? My name is Jet. Welcome back to episode of MDK Racing Victory Stop. Wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say is wow. That was one of the best, wildest, craziest Bristol races I have ever seen in my entire life. And never thought in my, with this car, never thought I would say the words, this had the most lead changes out of any short track race in NASCAR history with the next gen car. This race review, I can't even methodically go through everything with you just because of the fact that so much happened. This race had 54 lead changes. Like I said, that's the most out of any short track race in NASCAR history. Broke the original record, record, which was 40 back in 1991. And this was the first time since I think in the spring of 94, 91, where five or less cars were on the lead lap at Bristol. And the last time that happened in any NASCAR cup race in general, if they go back to Dover in June of 2004. I mean, you have to understand, Daytona and Atlanta had less than Bristol. Daytona had 41 lead changes, Atlanta had 48 lead changes, and those were super speedways. You expect those types of numbers. No one ever, no one here expected Bristol to be that chaotic. I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin with this race. I mean, right away from the get-go, we knew that, okay, this race was going to be different. I mean, we saw racing like I've never seen before. I mean, they were swapping the lead back and forth. You know, Josh Berry going after Ryan Blaney. I mean, so much action, so many lead changes at the beginning. And it was like, okay, this is weird. And you had already some like interesting tire strategy that was going on that just did not work. Like Tyler Reddick after a caution between Joey Logano and William Byron that saw Byron going into the wall. After that, Reddick stayed out and he was just so off the pace. He was getting hit from behind because he was so slow, got taken out. And then Zane Smith decided to just put on the Arca brakes and just run run into the front end of his car. All that happened within the first 20 some odd laps or so. I mean, it was just pure chaos. But right away, we knew that, okay, these tires cannot last. And at first, what I feared was that we would see a repeat of the 2008 Brickyard 400 where the tires just could not last. And it was getting so bad to the point where NASCAR threw a caution every 10 laps or so. It became an absolute farce. And that was my fear. I love the, the fact that we were getting tire wear. Love the fact that we we're seeing drivers actually having to nurse the car. But... I was afraid that it would get to that point of no return. I mean, hell, even Goodyear got to the point where Goodyear had to go out during the race and mount new tires for the teams because they didn't have enough to make it for the end of the race. I mean, the tire fall off was so great. I mean, they were going about as slow as two seconds. I mean, you expect a 15-4, mid-15, you expect that around a lap at Bristol. They were running like 17-5, 17-8. They were going so slow just to try and manage these tires. And personally, as a fan, I loved it because it feels like for the first time in a long time, this really, truly felt like a throwback race. We were, we've been so used to seeing drivers just get on the brakes, bam, jam right back in the full throttle. But this was a throwback to you actually have to nurse your tires. You actually had to treat them like they were your babies. And it was such a nice feeling to see that, to see drivers actually work. They actually had to work their race car. And it was really back in the driver's hands. And that's another thing I noticed. You talked about things that drivers could control. You didn't hear anything about uh, aero. You didn't hear anything about clean air, about track position. I mean, we saw drivers like Ty Gibbs, who had pit equipment interference start 30, 30 place just so far back, drives the way up towards the front within 20 laps or so. I mean, it, it, it was... You, if you wanted to, you can make a pass, but you had to be careful because, you know, again, you don't want to kill these tires. The interesting thing from Goodyear is that apparently, according to them, this was not a new tire compound. They didn't bring in a new tire. These were tires that were used last year. The only difference was that NASCAR added resin on the bottom of the racetrack. I don't know if, if it had that much of a dramatic effect to it, but it made those tires... I mean, you couldn't go maybe 40 laps more, 40, 50 laps more around that area 
that was the max you could use your tires. And that was just riding normally. You had to really go into real tire conservation mode to really make those tires work. Now, once again, kind of like what we saw last week in a Phoenix, Toyota dominated once again. They led all but 98 laps. Absolute domination. And of course, it ended with Denny Hamlin, one of the best short track races current at the moment, and Martin Strix Jr. Those two had a great battle that last green flag run. Incredible the way those two were managing their tires, working the way through lap traffic. Truex was out in front. Lap traffic held him up. Hamlin took the lead. Truex fought back. But it was, it was an incredible battle to the finish. But it was Denny Hamlin that would get the win uh, to go back to victory lane for his fourth career Bristol win, his 52nd career cup win. Uh, like I said, though, also goes back to back at Bristol because he won here in the fall of 2023. So let's take a look at the results. I just want to give you all the results so that we can really dive more in deep as to what took place in this race, because I cannot methodically tell you what happened from start to finish because so much happened. Unreal. Anyways, so Denny Hamlin wins his teammate Marshall Jr. in second. Brad Kozlowski, incredible run for him in third. Alex Bowman, haven't heard from him this entire season, except for the Daytona 500, comes home in fourth, and his teammate Larson in fifth. John Hunter Nemechek, Chris Buescher, Chase Elliott, a, finally a top 10 finish for that nine team. Ty Gibbs, we're going to talk about him in a little bit, but 137 out of the 500 laps he led. He had a dominant card that comes home in ninth, and Christopher Bell in 10th. And then Michael McDowell, Josh Berry, great run for him in that four car. Chase Briscoe, Ryan Priest, Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney, Justin Haley, Daniel Suarez, Kaz Grala, and Eric Jones, the top 20. And then Corey LaJoy, Joey Logano, AJ Allmendinger, Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, Todd Gillen, Carson Hosefar, Daniel Hemrick, Bubba Wallace, his teammate Tyler Reddick, the top 30. The final six drivers go to Austin Sendrick, Harrison Burton, Ricky Senna Jr., Noah Gregson, William Byron, and Zane Smith. So, like I said, this race was all about tires. Tires, tires, tires. I mean, you even had Goodyear themselves make a statement during the race to discuss what was going on with tires. And uh, I want y'all to take a listen to this. Why is the racetrack behaving differently this weekend than what, than what it did uh, a year ago? It's the same, uh, it's the same package. Uh, it's the same tire combination. Um, obviously, the difference is resin was placed on the lower groove instead of the PJ1. Um, yet I still think the racetrack should be taking rubber um, as it did last fall. Took rubber immediately uh, during that race. So still a bit of an unknown as far as why it's not behaving the same way, uh, that being the racetrack. Um, but that's kind of what we know now. Um, obviously everybody's kind of in the same boat. Some guys are able to manage through it a little bit better than others, but it's, you know, it's still a, a tough situation and, and we're just going to have to try to understand exactly what's happening. Um, what's different and, um, and adjust from there. Okay. My fear is that because of that response, we will go back to September with a much harder, almost stone like tire. But then you had John props of NASCAR. He went on record saying that this was probably one of the best short track races he has seen in his entire life, which is encouraging news because it was, it was incredible. The first stage, like I said, was a bit wonky because I mean, you saw drivers that couldn't go like 20 laps without blowing tires. I mean, it was insane. I mean, in the final few laps of stage one, you had Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch both either spin out while Hamlin lost a tire, Busch spun out. We're gonna talk about him in a little bit near the end of the stage. And it seemed as though that it would be like a 2008 Brickyard 400 style of race because drivers couldn't go more than 20 laps without just killing their tires. But the way I looked at it was is that, again, they weren't accustomed to it. They weren't used to that. So it was a learning curve, which added a whole other layer of strategy to this race. I was thoroughly entertained from start to finish. And this is one of those races where I didn't want it to end. I just, I was just like, I want more laps. I need to see what else is happening. Like, I need more. I need more. This is not enough. That's how good this race was. And Dale Jr. alluded to that by saying that this was like every race in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I never grew up watching those races, but... If that's what it was like, we need more of that every race, every sh like, I, man, imagine with, with Martinsville, how that's going to turn out. Or, you know, what if we go back in September? Will the same thing be applied? If NASCAR just adds that resin on the bottom of the racetrack, would that do something? I mean, I don't know what caused it because, again, the tires did not change from last year. So I don't know what caused such this dramatic turn of just tires falling off or just drivers couldn't be able to wrap their arms around these tires. But... Whatever they did, 
keep let's keep doing that please okay i say keep doing that please but maybe you could bring a little bit of a harder tire because the part that was um not as fun was that you saw all the marbles around the racetrack but you saw no rubber being laid out which was not a good thing that's something we need we need to be able to get rubber back laid out on the racetrack so that's the one thing i will say that goodyear or nascar whatever they can do to come up with a way to make that happen but other than that i mean I don't know how you could hate this race. If you don't like this race, stop watching NASCAR because something is wrong with you. Okay, I understand if you don't like it, if a driver you like didn't win or had a bad race, but if you are a race fan and you didn't enjoy that, then something is wrong with you. So let's go over the results. Let's go over the drivers. Let's first talk about with Joe Gibbs Racing. Un once again, domination. I mean, all four drivers led laps. Hamlin, no surprise. I mean, when you look at the top three, let's just look at the top three in general. This was a driver's race. And to prove that, you look at those top three. Hamlin, Truex, and Kozlowski. One has over 50 wins, and the other two are former cup champions. This was a driver's race, a throwback race. But anyways, uh, like I said, Joe Gibbs Racing, man, they are going to be scary this year. I mean, they dominated Phoenix. They dominated Bristol. Unbelievable. All four showed incredible speed. But the driver that... I thought had the best car was Ty Gibbs. He led the second most laps, I think 137 out of 500. He had the class of the field. It didn't matter where he started, he could start at the back and bam, just go forward. And it seemed as though that his tires were just always going to be five or so laps fresher than everyone else's. It seemed as though that nothing could beat Ty Gibbs. Unfortunately, however, you did have lap traffic play a role into it. When Ty Gibbs was out in front with the leaders in those closing laps, yeah, lap traffic was bouncing off of cars that had him cut a tire. That took him out of the race. But other than that, Gibbs, I'm telling you, he is going to win a race. He is too good the way he has been racing this year. He will win a race somehow, some way down the line. I thought this was his day. He was close, but he will get that win one day this year. Uh, but yeah, Joe Gibbs Racing as a whole, scary the way how they competed these past two weeks. RFK drivers, the 6 and the 17, once again, I mean, they didn't have the best car, except for Kozlowski. Kozlowski had a top five car, I felt like, but once again, you don't hear about them. All of a sudden, they're in the mix, and boom, they come out with top 10 finishes. Hendrick Motorsports, interesting day. I mean, Bowman and Byron, and Larson, fourth and fifth, Bowman. Didn't hear anything from him all right song. He's up there, finished fourth. Kyle Larson, he finished fifth, but he did lead some laps. Uh, Chase Elliott was just there. Didn't have the best car, but he didn't end up with an eighth place finish. So a good run for Hendrick Motorsports compared to what happened last weekend at Phoenix where, they're, where they just disappeared. Byron got caught up in a crash early on, so he doesn't count. But a solid run for all three running Hendrick Motorsports cars and a nice run to finally see from Alex Bowman to get a top five finish because outside of Daytona he hasn't been heard from the past two years. Stuart Haas Racing 12th 13th and 14th for the 4 14 and 41. Gregson who was down the running order because of that I think it was an engine problem or some type of issue late in the race so that's why he finished so low but for SHR for the 12 or for the 41 14 and the 4 they had you know top 50 finishes they're slowly but surely getting better and better. Who knows when they're going to get back up to, you know, where we expect them to be at. But you're starting to see some improvement the last uh, four or so weeks. I should say the entire 2024 season. You're starting to see some improvement from that SHR team. Another couple of drivers I want to give a shout out to, and that's Rick Ware Racing. The 15 and the 51. Their finishes don't tell the full story. I mean, we saw Grala and Haley run in the top 10 and like consistently no pit strategy no nothing like that like actually consistently be up towards the front and that was the beauty about this race you know drivers that you would think with the equipment you know they couldn't be up there they were challenging josh barry we know shr like i mentioned shr doesn't have they're not at the level of gibbs or penske but yet here they were up front challenging for the lead that was a beauty about this race and people for people that bring up oh wait break up 400 it's not the same number one we didn't have those 10 lap competition cautions. Number two, it wasn't as if like, oh no, after 10 laps, all the tires are gone. Now we did see in this race, after 40 some odd laps, I mean, you would get down to the, you would start cording your tire. I mean, it, it got to the point where you could not, like you literally physically, physically could not use your tire anymore. Harvick mentioned on the broadcast after a certain amount of time, your car just turns off because you use your tires so much. You literally have nothing left. So you really, really had to manage your tires like... 
it, almost like the tortoise and the hare. You know, it's not about who's the fastest, but who can, you know, last the longest. You know, you really had to be who's the fastest tortoise in this race. That's how you can sum up who was the fastest tortoise. Um, but this race was just fantastic. I cannot stress how much I enjoy this race. There are there are usually down periods in a NASCAR race where you're like, okay, this part's maybe not as exciting. But with this race, I, I again, like I said, I would have wanted 100 more laps. <laughs> That's how much I loved it. A couple of drivers to mention. Joe Logano, 22nd. Now, he did show a bit more speed, but another finish outside the top 20. RCR were, I mean, Dylan and Bush, 24th and 25th. Ouch. I mean, Bush had a mess. He spun, I think he spun twice in this race. I mean, he has just been, these past couple weeks, that eight car has just not been there. Um, another a couple of other, other notables, like 23rd and Racing, 29th and 30th. You know, Reddick was caught up in that accident early on. Uh, and Bubba with tire issues. Again, so many drivers had tire issues. I mean, you had Bell that had a flat tire. Gibbs, I mentioned, had a flat tire. So many drivers had flat tires near the end of that run because they couldn't be able. They weren't able to, um, to handle conserving their tires. And that's just what made it so fun. It was that you really had to see, okay... Who can who can make their tires last? It, it was it was one of the, one of the most entertaining races I've ever seen in my life. Now, from a broadcast perspective, Harvick did a great job. Mike Joy did a great job, but somebody get Clint Boyer out of the booth. I'm sorry, I'm done with Clint. I'm really done with Clint. Get Jamie McMurray or Kurt Busch. Bring Larry Mack, but get Clint Boyer off the mic. I mean, he that that the vibe is doesn't work. With Boyer or with Harvick and Mike Joy, it works. You can tell there's something there. But with Boyer, it just messes everything up. Um, Fox, I thought, did a good job in terms of previous weeks. It still wasn't good, but I thought it was better than you know, what we expect from Fox. They did a lot more helicopter shots, which I thought was pretty nice. And speaking of helicopter shots, in those shots, showed the, the fans in the stands. It wasn't a sellout by any means, but... You look at the status of the spring Bristol race, it got to a point where there were so little people showing up that they closed off the turns. Here, I mean, pretty solid crowd for Bristol spring standard. So nice to see that the fans show up and hopefully they saw, I mean, hopefully they enjoyed what they saw because I know I certainly did. Um, but I'm very interested in seeing how Goodyear anticipates the spring, the uh, September race when they come back here for the fall. Would they bring a different tire? You know, would NASCAR do anything with the resin? I don't know. What I feel like is maybe just bring a tire that allows to add rubber. That's the only thing I, I ask for is allow it to add rubber. But other than that, I thought, I mean, you really couldn't, you can't complain about this race. It was a throwback to, we been cramming for tire wear. You could argue, was it a little extreme? You could argue, argue that, but we've been cramming for tire wear and we got that and more. We saw for the first time in a long time, our drivers had to wheel the car. They had to take control of the car. They couldn't make the excuse of, oh, it's aero, oh, this, oh, that. No, 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 no. If you didn't win it, it's your fault. You blew the tire. That was fun to see. But yeah, what would I give this race? You know, based on my reaction, 10 out of 10. 10 out of freaking 10. Honestly, not joking. Can't complain about this race whatsoever. I thought it was fantastic. NASCAR this year has been cooking. Outside of Phoenix, every single race was a banger. Or at the very least, really good and entertaining to watch. And next week, we're going to Coda, which was also fun last year. Man, we got some... Ooh. Tell you, NASCAR is cooking in 2024, and I am here for it. But what are your thoughts on this race? Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you like it or did you love it? The reason I, I mean, I say those two things because you had to like this race. If you didn't like it, I please would like to know why. If it's because your driver got wrecked or whatever, understandable. But if you didn't like it because of the racing, I really need to know why. Because I, what I thought, what we saw was just perfection. Beautiful. Like a Mona Lisa. That was what we saw. The Mona Lisa of short track racing. I loved it.